Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be on the War Within Alpha, checking out the hero talents for Balance Druid. Uh, I wanted to check these out. I was super excited to try one of them out, uh, Loon's Chosen. I'm primarily a PvPer, so I was really excited for Loon's Chosen over the Keeper of the Grove, but I will be trying out both. So, uh, there, and in addition to the hero talents, Balance probably got the most changes on the Alpha right now. There's tons of new talents on both the left and the right side it's including some other changes as well it's extremely overwhelming so i suggest looking on wowhead and most of the changes unless you already have but um because i can't remember everything off the top of my head uh but yeah this video mostly just showing the hero talents and uh yeah so let's go ahead and start off with loons chosen first so what this does is it's basically, it seems to be mostly passives instead of um, an actual ability you use. So for me, uh, it appears to be either affecting Fury of the Loon or Full Moon, depending on what you spec into. And for me, I usually like to spec into Fury of the Loon. So for Fury of the Loon, the first talent is each flash of energy blasting nearby enemies for astral damage. And then for Full Moon, it calls down two Crescent Moods that deal Astral Bat damage and three Astral Power. Uh, for the next one, Moonfire and Stonefire generate Astral Astral Power. Okay, that's pretty basic. Moonfire increases additional damage. Pretty basic. Moonkin and Bear Form reduce Arcane damage taken by 6% and all other magic damage. This will be pretty good uh, for against other casters, so that would be nice. It's just it's a decent defensive, I guess. Uh, each non-arcane damaging ability you use increases the damage of your next arcane damaging ability by 3%, stacking 3 times. Uh, another standard damage increased ability. Enemies damaged by Full Moon, Fury of the Loon, or Lunar uh, Beam take 4% increased damage from you. Another standard increased damage. Uh, now we got another Choice Nod. Enemies affected by Moonfire are slowed by 30%. Using Wild Charge while in Bear Form or Moonkin Form incurs a 3 second shorter cooldown. So basically, you get your mobility back up quicker here if you use Loon's Grace. Or you can have a slow at Moon Dust Hall. Oh, having a slow as a Boomkin? Oh, that's so freaking good. I'm keeping that. Uh, Stellar Command increases the damage of Fury Balloon and Moonfire by 15%. And the other one, Starfire, deals... 40% increased damage to its primary target, but no longer triggers Solar Eclipse. I feel like the standard damage increase is probably better here, so I'll just pick that. Uh, Moonfire damage has a chance to call down a Fury of a Loon to follow your targets. So, basically this just calls that has a chance to call down a Fury of a Loon. That actually kind of sounds pretty good if you just dot as many classes uh, in like AoE situations like Battle Rounds primarily what I do. Uh, Incarnation Chosen of Loon um, increased arcane damage from spells by 10% while active. So basically, your burst will hit harder. So it depends on what you want. If you want more bigger damage during your burst or a chance to cause fear. I feel like I'm going to try this one. More burst is nice, but I don't know. They're both pretty good. All arcane rain damage from oh our all arcane damage from your spells and abilities is increased by three percent. Your arcane abilities have reduced the cooldown of Fury Balloon by two point seconds and reduce the cooldown of New Moon, Half Moon, Full Moon by one point second. So this will give you Fury of a Loon back up faster, and this increases your damage by like three percent. I feel like getting your cooldowns back up faster is really nice. I like that plus though more. So I'm gonna definitely take that one. It says we have an extra point available, but I used them all. Weird. Uh, anyways, for the last one, further increases the power of Boundless Moonlights. The flash of energy now generates 6 extra power, and its damage is increased by 50%. And New Moon, Half Moon, also called down on one Crescent Moon, so basically another Crescent Moon. So, Alright, now we try this out. Dude, the fact that you get a movement slow on Moonfire now is so freaking nice. Wow, you can get your Fury of the Loon back up way faster with this. I'm 
kind of want to see how good the proc rate is on uh, getting a full, a full theory of the moon proc, though. Because if it's not worth it, then may end up just picking the other one. What happens if I just put like Moonfire in like everything? Maybe we'll get lucky and get a full moon star, a fear of the moon out somewhere. Or maybe it doesn't proc on these things. <laughs> but so far I'm not seeing any procs. I mean, it could be bugged right now, too. I don't know if it's bugged or not. I'm not seeing any Fury Balloon procs. Well, that answers that. So right now, I guess we'll change this to that. So for the most part, Balloon's Chosen is uh, just basically your standard damage increases. That's And you get like lower cooldowns and some other stuff, but... That seems to be what um, Loon's Chosen is about, so. I want to see how fast you can get a Fury, uh, Fury of Loon again. Holy cow, you can really get this back up pretty quickly. I actually like this, this is pretty cool. The fact that we get a slow now... And can get Fear of the Loon back up quicker. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Alright. So, that is Fury... Uh, not Fury. That is the Loon's Chosen. Let's go ahead and try Keeper of the Grove next. I wasn't really as excited for this one. Simply due to the fact that... I feel like Force of Nature is like more for PvE than it is for PvP. So, like, unless it's, like, really good, I feel I feel like it's just not really, you know, worth it. So, just my opinion, of course. So, let's go ahead and go through this. Force of Nature grants three charges of Dream Burst, causing your next Wrath or Starfire to explode on the target, dealing nature damage to nearby enemies. Damage reduced to both five targets, so it's basically kind of like AoE, I guess. Uh, your chance casts Moonfire on nearby targets about once every six seconds. Your maximum mana is increased by 5%, and your maximum astral power is increased by 20. Uh, your regrowth protects you, reducing damage you take by 8% while your regrowth is on you. So another defensive, not bad. It's kind of similar to Glistening Fur on the other one. Uh, okay, Choice Nod. Your Force of Nature Trents no longer taunt and deal 100% increased melee damage. So again, um, this is like I said, it feels like primarily for PvE PvEers. I imagine... I'll, Every PvE is probably going to take this one, unless they're um, solo, of course. But uh, I imagine a lot of them are going to probably pick that for like dungeons and stuff. But I, like I said, I'm not a pve -er, so I could be wrong on that. Uh, your Force of Nature trends have 50% increased health. This one I feel like probably more PvE PvPers might take. Or maybe extra PvPers might take this one because it's increased melee damage. Because if you're basing the whole talents based off Trents, then, um, yeah, I, I mean, more damage the better, you know. Uh, scenario Smite. Casting Star Surge or Starfall increases the damage of your next Star Surge or Starfall by 10%, stacking two times. Casting another spell cancels this effect. So it's just another standard damage increase. Wrath and Starfire damage increased by 12%. Regrowth healing increased by 6%. That'll be pretty nice. Uh, Orbital Strike applies Stellar Flare for 4 additional seconds. And then Primordial or Arcanic Pulsar grants Unconditioned um, for another 2 additional seconds. I feel like this one will be pretty nice. It increases your damage and also increases your healing. So that'll be pretty nice. Uh, your Force of Nature trends generate 3 Astral Power every 2 seconds, so that'll help you get Astral Power quicker. And then Force of Nature cooldown reduced by 10 seconds. I'm a fan of lower cooldowns, so I feel like this will be a lot nicer. Uh, so we'll get that one. Force of Nature grants an additional stack of Dream Bursts. Um, for, that'll actually help against... Uh, for your That'll help you explode your target. And the other one... 
Time elapsed while your major abilities are available to be used, subtracted from that next ability cooldown after next time you use it, up to 5 seconds. Affects Force of Nature, Incarnation, and Convoke of Spirits. I feel like the Control of the Dream would be the better choice here. Uh, every 5 regrowths you cast makes your next Wrath, Starfire, or Entangling Roots instant increases their damage. Interesting. So you have to cast so many regrowths for that to work. But, interesting. Uh, every five star surges or star star falls you cast makes your next regrowth or entangling roots instance. Uh, now that's more like it. That's actually nuts. That could be very useful to um, kite somebody. And then last but not least, each of your force of nature trunks increases your damage by three percent while active. All right, let's try this out. All right, I gotta switch to Trents. All right, I don't have to do that. I don't know why we have an extra talent. I feel like that's I might it must be missing something. But we have an extra talent for some reason. All right, dropping Trents. I feel like the trends still do like kind of like meh damage though. I mean, obviously it's not tuned yet, but yeah, this uh, the trend, the trends definitely seem more designed for the other spec than Boomkin form. That's just basic off of what I've like. <laughs> I never liked trends in PvP. I don't think anybody ever uses them, so. I think they're more designed for PvE, in my opinion. There's obviously I know there's people that use in PvE, so I feel like this build is kind of like more designed for PvE, in my opinion, and the other build is designed for PvP in mind. Uh, like I said, this is just from experience with Trents on live as it is, and since they're basing it off tr the whole thing is based off Trents, that uh, I think it's just it's better for PvE than PvP. So. Seems to me, as a PvPer, the build for Balance Droid seems to be better for Alun's Chosen. And Keeper of the Grove is more PvE related. Although you can obviously use Alun's Chosen for PvE as well. So, this is just pretty much one of, uh, um, one of the new things for Balance Droid, this expansion. There's obviously a bunch of different changes as well. I can't remember every single one of them. But off the top of my head, uh, I can kind of quickly s skim through it. Uh, Swift Mend is gone in its baseline for Resto. Moon can form, gone baseline for Balanced Dread. Tireless Pursuits is gone and Feline Swiftness is here instead. Moved over here. Uh, new talent, Fluid Form. Which, if you use Wrath and Starfire and you're not in Moon can form, it'll automatically put you in it. Same for Shred. Uh, it can apparently be used in any form and also switch you into cat form, which weird. I don't think a lot of people will take this talent, though. Another new one, Ursuck Spirits. Stamina bear form increased by 10%. Uh, oat skin, survival instincts, and bark skin reduced damage taken by additional 10%. So this will be nice, having less damage taken. Uh, a lot of the talents are now 1 point instead of 2, ta uh, instead of two like Astral Influence. Uh, Wellhorn Survival in uh, Wellhorned Instincts is now one. A few things kind of got lowered, like Cyclone's a little bit lower now. I don't. I think it was like a little bit higher. Um, and Thick Hide is also one that's one talent instead of two. And I think that's all of it for the left side. Uh, I could be missing some stuff, but that's all I can remember off the top of my head at the moment. And now for the right side, uh, the new talents are Astro Communion. It got changed. Instead of it's, instead of being a cooldown, it's a passive now. It increases your Astro Power by 20. And when you enter an Eclipse, you get 12 Astro Power. Umbral Embrace, Wrath and Starfire have a 20% chance to cause your next Wrath or Starfire cast during an Eclipse to become Astral and deal 100% additional damage. And then the one below that 
is when you consume it, it increases the damage of your next Moonfire, Sunfire, Stellar Fire, and all that by 20% by, um, for 5 seconds. Uh, Waning Tri Twilight, I'm glad this actually got moved to 1 talent instead of 2 talents now. So you only have to spend one uh, one point in that instead of two. Uh, and some other ones. Incarnations now lower um, lower time limit instead of a uh, a long time now. Like inc incarnation was thirty seconds. It's like twenty seconds now. And then celestial alignment is lower than that. I think it's like fifteen. It says twenty one seconds, but I think it's because I have a talent that increases it or something like that. Uh, Nature's grace I don't think was here. So it's it now is basically the tier set in Dragonflight. So that would be pretty nice. I actually really like this tier set. I use this on live and uh, for PvP, and I feel like it's really nice to be able to get into your clips quicker. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, Ordable Strike is nerfed. It's still around though, and it lowers the cooldown still of Incarnation. Instead of having it three minutes, you'll have a two minute cooldown for your burst. And then the choice nod for it is different. This one increases the duration. So they lo they nerfed the duration of Incarnation Celestial Alignment. If you want it to last longer again, you have to choose between a two minute cooldown on Incarnation uh, or three minute, in cool uh, three minute cooldown on Incarnation, but it lasts longer. So yeah, that'll be the choice you're gonna have to make. Uh, stellar amp and uh, stellar amplification is new. You see, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, stellar amp, amp if I can even talk. Stellar is basically a new talent. Star surge increases the damage of the target takes by periodic effects, and shooting stars by 12% for five seconds. Reapplying this ex um, effect extends its duration up to 20 uh, 20 seconds. Uh, I believe there's some other new ones, but those are the ones I remember off the top of my head. And then one other change is they did n end up nerfing some of the Astro Power generation for Boomkin this expansion. So it's a little bit lower to generate your Astro Power, but just from testing it, it doesn't really seem like it's going to make that big of a difference. Um, they lowered the Astral Generate of Wrath, Starfire. Uh, New Moon, Half Moon, Fury Balloon, all that stuff, so. And it's only by, like, two or something close to that, if I remember right. Anyways, um, that's gonna be it for the video, guys. Let me know what you guys think of the hero talents, and let me know what you guys think of the balance druid changes. Uh, I, odds are there's definitely stuff I probably forgot. Like I said, if you go look up uh, the balance tree changes, you'll see there were there's so much, and my memory is garbage, and there's no way I was gonna remember all that anyways. So, I remembered most of the talent changes, but uh, I was mostly doing this to look up the or try out the hero talents anyways. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think of the hero talents. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be some people that play PVE that watch this video as well. Uh, just a heads up, like I said, my my play style is more designed for PvP over PvE, so do keep that in mind. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys later.